I have been interested in beg buttons for a long time. Before I got my Bach feats, I was mostly interested in how long it took for the lights to change after the button was pressed. I even made a PPGIS web map to try and find the longest wait times in my city to see if there's a pattern to the delay times. Long delay times are less safe for pedestrians because pedestrians may cross against the light if there's a long wait. They also show that your city prioritizes cars over people since people waiting at beg buttons while walking or biking are exposed to more pollution and inclement weather than necessary. It is unclear to me why some lights in my city change right away when the button is pressed and why some lights, just a few blocks away, always take a long time to change. But this video isn't about long beg button wait times. It's about the accessibility of beg buttons. Since getting my buck feats, I've been more aware of the placement of beg buttons. Inaccessible placement of beg buttons are not only more difficult for me to reach for my Bach feats on a smaller, more nimble bike, but now I'm more aware of the difficulties faced by people who require mobility devices. I hope this video will help new Bach feats riders or those who are considering buying a Bach feats. Be prepared for a new challenge when you try to access a beg button. This video is also intended for biking advocates or transportation planners. I hope you put more consideration to the accessibility of beg buttons. Bach feats are becoming more popular, even in car-centric cities like mine, and as much as possible should be done to encourage their use. However, the most important reason to think about the accessibility of beg buttons is to make life as easy as possible for people with mobility devices. So let's look at some examples of beg buttons in my city and their accessibility. The first type of beg button I want to show isn't a beg button, it's a detection loop. I know of only four of these in my city, but I suspect there are a few more. In this example, there are lights to indicate if you have actually been detected. This might be the most accessible kind of beg button for people on bikes. The downsides are that sometimes a person on a bike is not detected, but the lights provide visual feedback so that the person is made aware that they need to go and press the beg button. Second, I don't know if these detection loops detect mobility devices, though I assume they would. However, they are placed for people on bikes and not for people using mobility devices, so someone on a mobility device may approach an intersection from a different path than a person on a bike would and need to press the beg button. The second example is my favorite type of beg button. These buttons have been placed on a special pole that a person on a bike can reach from their bike. I can use the curb as a footrest, remain on my seat, and still access this beg button. The two buttons at this intersection are the only ones of this type that I know of in my entire city. They have been at this intersection for decades. I find it funny that these buttons predate this cycle track. The street used to have a Sharrow and a counterflow painted bike gutter. When the cycle track was installed, a detection loop was installed. However, unlike my first example, there are no lights to indicate if a person on a bike was detected. I didn't even know the detection loop was here until I took a closer look while filming this video. The first detection loop I showed is older than this one. I assumed my city would continue to install the detection lights along with detection loops, but I assumed wrong. Without the lights, I thought I had to press the beg button because I hadn't noticed the detection loop. As you can see, the beg button is not easily accessible at this location. The first two examples are the only bike specific beg button types that I know of in my city. All the other beg buttons I'm about to show have simply been installed on the light post. The only difference in the accessibility is how the sidewalk and curb cuts have been installed. Some beg buttons, like this one, are more accessible because people on bikes can ride past them. They are nearly as good as the beg button just for people on bikes that was installed on that special pole. Some beg buttons are still accessible, but they require me to walk my back feet backwards after pressing the button. Walking my back feet backwards won't stop me from riding, but I can see it being very difficult for some riders, especially with heavy loads. Riding with my assistant with me makes it a little easier to access these beg buttons. My last examples are two beg buttons that are very difficult to access. The first is this construction zone. It requires a sharp turn and walking my back feet backwards. If the tape wasn't on the pylons, it would be much easier to access. The final beg button was installed just a year or two ago. I find it so awkward to access this beg button that I park my back feet and run over on foot. This intersection used to just have a beg button for people walking or biking, but was upgraded to a full set of lights. There are detection loops for cars, but not for bikes. I have a suspicion that the lights change faster for cars than when the beg button is pressed, but my city's repeated efforts to prioritize cars or people may have left me a little paranoid. Not Just Bikes recently released a video about pedestrian crossings. 
It is not specific to Backpiece, but it's still well worth your time to see the comparison between car-centric cities like mine and more advanced countries like the Netherlands. I hope this video has been useful. I know it won't change your life as a Backbeats rider, but it shows that just a small urban design changes could make riding your Backbeats, or getting around with a mobility device, a little more pleasant.